Welcome back to Excel HQ. Today we'll be going over the index match function, which is the better alternative to the VLOOKUP function. We'll be going over how to use it, the benefits and its shortcomings, and how to overcome those shortcomings. Now let's get into it. The first thing you need to know about index match is that it's two separate functions working together. So first I'll show you how index works, then match, and then we'll put them together so you have a complete understanding of how index match works. So in our first cell here, I'll type in index. And what index wants is an array, a row number, and a column number. It wants to pinpoint a certain cell for you. So I'm going to highlight my whole array here as my table on the left side. And then I'm going to give it a row that I want returned. So I'm going to say row three just for now. And then my column number, it isn't required because it has those square brackets around it. However, it is actually required if your array is more than one column because it needs to know and it's not dynamic. It's not going to return every column for you, which is actually one of the shortcomings of index match. So if I put a two here, it will give me my middle column and then I'll close off that bracket and I'll get China. And what it just did for me is it took my C column and then it took my third row and it pinpointed it to China. Now let's move on to our match function. For our match function, we'll go equals match. And for our match function, unlike our index function, we actually need a lookup value. So I'm just gonna click on F2 for now. We'll fill that in after. And then our lookup array. So I'm gonna use my order number as my lookup array. And then for match type, you can specify which match type you want. So it's less than, greater than, which is how it searches in your order number. However, every number I have right now is unique. It would matter more if I was in my COO table where I had multiple cells with the same value. However, for now, I'm just going to put zero because I want an exact match, nothing more, nothing less. I'll put that in. It returns me an NA because I haven't filled out what I want my lookup value to be. Let's say I want it to be one, two, five, four, two. What's my order number for that? Well, it's just going to return to me row 30. So what's row 30? It's all the way down here. So then I get France because I specified it as my second column. And that would be row 30. So for now, if I put them together, what my index identifies is my pinpointed location. And what my match does, it identifies my row or column number without actually having to go into it to find out what row or column number I need. So in this case, I'll put them together. So here's my index. I'm going to choose this whole table as my index. And then I want a row number. And instead of giving a certain row number this time, I just want it to return a certain order number. And instead of looking through every row for the order number I want, I'm just going to use my match function. Then I'm going to look up the same one again, that 12542. And then I'm going to give my lookup array, which is only the order number. Now I'm going to close off my bracket and that finishes my match function for my row number. And now for column, I'm just gonna do two again because I want it to return the country of the order number. And then I'm gonna close off this whole function and it's gonna to return to me France, which as we already went through is correct. Here's France. And here it is pinpointed on my graph. You can also use index match in the match part for the columns and rows. In this part, it's not really necessary to do it for columns, however, in our table to the right, it could be necessary to do it for columns. So let's give that a row. So first off, our index, what's our array? Our array are all our revenue numbers here. And then our row number, which will start with match, will be our lookup value. We'll put our lookup value right here. And then our lookup array will start off with our countries. Finish that off. And then that's the match array for the row number. And now match for our column number. Let's have our lookup value in this cell. And then let's identify our column possibilities, which is 2020 to 2023, and then close that off, close off the whole function. And then we can type in what we want. So right now I want Canada and I want 2023. So it'll give me 56,000 and it is a match. We could also do, which is actually a cool thing you could do with index match, is I could make this a list right here. So I don't have to go in typing every single time. So I would go to my data tab and then I'd go to data validation. And in data validation, I would make a list and I would just identify that list as all these countries here. If I press okay on that, 
I'll get my list. And then if I go to United States, for example, I'll get the number 45,000. This 45,000 doesn't match with what it should be. Sometimes index match is funky like this. So what you need to do is just reiterate that it is an exact match. So I think I'm having a problem with my rows right now, not my columns. So I'll actually go back into my match function and then I'll just make sure to put in a zero there. And I think that should fix my problems. And now it gives me 31,000 for the United States for 2023. And that is the correct answer. Furthermore, now let's add a product. Let's use our table below in order to do it. What happens if you have two identifying features that are in the rows? Instead of right now, we have one identifying feature for the row and one identifying feature for the column. In this case, we have two for the rows. You can actually use a and symbol in order to have two different matches. And I'll show you what I mean by that right now. So in this column, I'm gonna go index, and then I'm gonna return all of these revenue numbers as my array. And then for my row number, I'm going to use match again. Everything's the same so far, except this time I'm going to look up the value of J2, which I'm going to put my product in, and I'm going to look up the value of L2, which is already here. The United States is already here. For my lookup array, what it will be for J2 is my product column, and what it will be for my country is my country column. There we go. And then I could just, I'll just put zero just to make sure there's no mess ups or anything. And then I'll close off that function. And then for my column number, I'll keep it the same as last time. I'll continue having my lookup value as 2023 and my lookup array will be my column headers. I'll put a match for that as well. And then I'll close off my match function and then I'll close off the entire function. And now it gives me NA because I didn't specify what I wanted in J2. Let's just put in laptop for now. So for a laptop in the United States, my 2023 sales is 3,900. Is that correct? Well, let's look down. Here's my United States area. Here's my laptop. And then here's 2023, which is the 3,900. Now you know how to use index, you know how to use match, and you know how to use them and make them work together to pinpoint the cells for you. Which brings me to my last point of its shortcomings. Index match and VLOOKUP, they can only ever give one cell back to you. And that is a problem because they are not dynamic functions. And if you do want more than one cell back to you, you're actually going to have to use the XLOOKUP function. So I'll go over to the right here to use the XLOOKUP function. And it's not going to be a whole video on the XLOOKUP function. I'm just going to show you why it could possibly be better than index match or VLOOKUP is because if I have my lookup value, let's just say the United States here, and then I choose my lookup array, which is my country, and then my return array. For my return array, I can actually choose multiple cells. So I can choose this whole revenue section here. There's also if not found match mode search mode, however, I'm not gonna go into that right now. And if I finish my X lookup, this will actually give me all of the numbers I need. It will give me my 66,000 all the way to my 31,000. If you want to learn more about XLOOKUP, I'll provide the link in the description. It is also a very good lookup tool for dynamic lookups. The only problem with it is that if you have large, large data sets, it can slow down processing time. However, it is still a valuable function to know and to use. Anyways, back to our index match. I hope you learned a thing or two. Make sure to subscribe and comment down below if there's anything you'd want to see in the future.